Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. I uh, hope you're having an unbelievable Monday. I hope that you are locked in and you are focused. I hope that you are committed to going the distance. Look, before I get into this real quick, uh, brief and powerful message, I want to remind you that right now we're in the middle of the One Year Love event. The One You Love event is real simple. Anyone who invests in a program, course, or package, the link will be in the description box to see the packages that are available. Anyone who invests in it will be gifted by me an equal package of the same value. What this does is allow you to gift someone with the gift of growth, the gift, the gift that keeps giving, the gift of growth, the gift of empowerment, the gift of healing, whatever is going on that needs to change, it's an opportunity for it to happen, not only for you, but for someone you really and truly care about. It can also create an environment of accountability if you guys decide to go through it at the same time. But whatever you do, make the final days of this year about intentional healing, intentional growth, intentional empowerment. Don't wait until New Year's to start talking about uh, resolutions and all of that. You need to start building momentum to move into a new opportunity with a full head of steam, with a full sense of focus, with an idea of what your destination looks like. So take advantage of that. And I look forward to working with those of you who are seriously committed to changing your life forever. Look, I've seen all kinds of gurus and experts on finance and business. And, you know, my thing is, I am a firm believer that if you have something of value, you have every right to market it and to earn a living doing it and presenting it because if a person can take what they've invested in you get something from you that grows them in a way that they can multiply the value they've invested they've won so there's no problem in that my problem is in where the focus is i think so many people know what your internal hunger is so many people know what you are yearning because you may still be broken. You still may need to heal. You still may need to evolve. You still may need to grow. And if you're not in the right place, you chase the wrong things. I um, have conducted many studies from social media, gathered data scientific in a scientific method to study the behavior of people and how they move, how we define success, is so limited and so constrictive that it no there's no wonder that people are frustrated because you're chasing low-hanging fruit there's a reason for the reason why there are so many people who have experienced a, a certain level of success financially and it's important for them to know that you know that they have it They've got to share it with you. Every time you look up, there's a picture of the, the last car they bought, the last trip they took, the clothes they're buying. Everything is about them presenting you with evidence of what they've accomplished. Now, I don't have a problem with celebrating and having fun and, let, and letting people know you do. But my thing is, what about the person is not just where it needs to be, to the point that they feel the need to prove to, to, to nobody, basically, that they're somebody. Why are you driven to prove to someone that's never been in your circle, never picked up the phone and called you, would not probably approach you if they saw you in purpose, that you have arrived? There's something inside. It's not until you get to a point that the ultimate goal is true self-fulfillment. What does that look like? True self-fulfillment says that I'm living my best life. Now, that I am impactful, that I have a place in this world because I have reached a level that I am now making my presence felt. Now, when I do that, there are certain secondary ancillary, ancillary benefits that come along with it. That's where the car and the you're in the house and all that stuff, but at the, at the core level, Am I making an impact? Is, is my presence 
being felt? Is there a positive force when people come into my periphery? Does it change their life? That's when you know you're where you're supposed to be. Yeah, it's nothing wrong. Nobody wants to be struggling. Nobody wants to sit up and feel like, man, I'm just barely me. But you got to have something higher. See, the things that we shoot for are low-hanging fruit. You do the right thing at the right time. You get that. But the reason you're so frustrated, and the reason it's so, and uh, the reason it's so uh, momentary and, 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 and temporal. Is because you're aiming for the wrong thing. If you hang in that level, you're constantly fighting to hold on to things that should just be coming to you. See, the cars and the money and all, that should be coming to you. But you've got to elevate your existence. You've got to elevate where you're at, where you're going, what you're doing, how you're moving this world. Are you touching lives? I mean, not just people who want to pay you money for what you do. Are you touching lives of the person you walk by? Marianne and I were out taking care of business Saturday. And I don't share stuff like this often. And obviously, I'm not, you know, I, I didn't take any pictures or anything like that because I don't believe in that type of stuff. But we passed by, and there was a guy out there with his family a young wife and two young children. And he had a sign that said, We've hit hard times. And I can't find employment. Please help. And I went and took, we, we, we had to stop by, actually we were stopping by the bank, and she had to go do something. And so we stopped by the bank, and I had made the point when I drove by him the first time that I would never say what I want to do for my family, but I would never have my wife out there with me. That was my first assessment, but it just stuck in my head. Instead of judging him, touch him so after we finish i drove back by that she she's already that's marion marion sees people in need and she's immediate thinking what are we going to do about it not what are we going to say about it what are we going to do about it so we go back by there i get out and obviously i take some some money with me but i'm not just going to give him the money i reach for his hand before i ever give him the money i touch him I shake his hand and I look him in the eyes and say, I don't care what you're going through. You're going to be okay. I know what it feels like to be a man who feels like he can't take care of his family, but this is temporary. Here's something for you now, and then here's something. Call me, and we'll figure it out together. Now, whether he calls or not isn't really important. Somebody went above and beyond what is normally expected. Somebody said, I'm willing to invest, if nothing else, time in helping you figure out what you're going on. That's not it. Today, I have an encounter with someone who follows me. And I'm not going to go into too much detail because I don't want to put anything out that may identify. But the greatest part of that encounter was they said, oh, my God. You are the same person that I've been following for years and watched on so many videos and read your books. You're exactly that person. Yeah, and I told that I I I'm I, I do everything I can to be authentically me. I'm not trying to prove to anybody I'm something else. I'm good being me. I don't have anything to prove. I'm here to touch lives. I'm here to make an impact. But that's the thing. Far too many people are out there trying to prove to everyone something that when you're truly in where you need to be in that zone in that place in that position of intentional growth where you have risen above where you have now reached the top see a bunch of things the car doesn't qualify you for being on top the house doesn't qualify you for being on top the clothes in your closet doesn't qualify for you for being on top you know what well, you know what top is when someone can encounter you and say they've experienced peace at a level they've never experienced it before. Experienced before. When people encounter you and say, there's something about you that literally shifted my energy. I can't explain it, I don't know how it happened, but thank you. When people walk into your environment and calmness takes over a very hostile and volatile mindset, you've reached a place in your life where you're operating at a confidence that lets you know 
that you have transcended the need to accumulate things. And what happens after that is you start to attract them. You start to look up and the things that other people are chasing are coming to you. And it's a secondary interest now. The number one interest is, am I making a difference? Am I making my presence felt? Are the lives of the people in my periphery better because I'm here? What my grandfather used to say to me, son, fill your space. What was he saying? Don't enter a room and leave people the same way you found them. Don't come into a situation and leave a brother with the same mindset and, and, and level of thinking that you found him. Don't move in this world and not leave the residue of your power, your force, your anticipation, your passion behind you. People should be able to come into spaces that you're no longer in no more and still feel your presence because you touched the lives of the people in that space. When you start serving people at that level, all this other stuff that people are chasing will start to come to you. And you won't give it the same value because it won't have the same meaning. Because now you're not looking for it to prove a point. You're simply enjoying it. I challenge you to intentionally walk into the best version of yourself. Find out what you have to give this world and determine in your mind that you're going to give it at the highest possible level. Then let everything else take care of itself. That's my challenge to you. On that note, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. Don't forget the giving season. I'm giving a, uh, of myself by matching your investment in the work I do by giving you a second package of equal value to give to someone you love so that they can empower themselves and they can leave 2021 in much better condition than they entered it with high anticipation of what 2022 holds, regardless of the challenges. My anticipation for my life isn't based on what I'm going to face. It's based on an understanding that I'm built for it. So I challenge you. Take your level to the next. Take your life to the next level. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day. that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse. Uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Yeah. Thank you.